Hi from Chile, I'm Jose Abel, civil engineer, and I want to do a quick follow-up video from yesterday's video. I want to show you how easy it is to do stuff once you get to know this system, and uh, you can play around with it and do some really awesome stuff. So I'm going to start from what we did yesterday. We have uh, the cube. If you, if you haven't watched yesterday's video, I'm going to leave the link on the description. Okay, so let's uh, let's run yesterday's example. That's not the terminal I want to work with. I want to work with this one. So this is the example yesterday. We had this this cube, and uh, we applied a force in the middle, and you you get the displacement field. This uh, plot is not very helpful. So let's uh, let's go to the post processing options, and uh, we'll change this to displacement, and give it a little a little displacement factor so that we amplify the displacement. So this is what it looks like. We want to create a beam from this so, and analyze using uh, with self-weight. Okay, so this is going to be very easy. We're going to start with the example here, the example.geo, and we're going to call it example2. Okay, and uh, we're going to open up in Gmesh, in this case, example2.geo, and it's the cube with, uh, well, pretty much the same things we had yesterday. So what I'm going to do now is I'm uh, going to use uh, Gmesh to define some variables. So B is going to be the width of the beam. Let's put 0.25 meters SI units. We're going to have a length of uh, 2 meters and we're going to have a, you know, we could, ch we could have a beam, the beam uh, flange and the web have different uh, thicknesses. We're just going to leave it at point. 0 0.05 for now and uh, let's start with the box so now we're going to use these variables to uh, to set up the box now uh, this beam is going to have a length L so here I'm going to use the variable L and if I reload with a zero we can see that the, ch the size changes to that of the variable we're going to have the width be in the y direction so it's going to go from minus B over 2 and uh, a total distance of B. So that's going to take us to the other side to B over 2. And that's how we do it. And then the same for the height, minus H over 2 and H over 2. If we reload, we get the, the beam size that we kind of want. This is what it looks like. Uh, it's looking a, a bit squared. Did I make a mistake? No, this has to be H. That's the mistake. Should be H. There we go. That's the full height. So now we're gonna, I'm gonna get rid of the physical groups. We're gonna bring them back later because it's, it's gonna get all messed up uh, because I'm changing the geometry. We're gonna add a second box. So we want to form the beam uh, inside by, by subtracting the, the areas without any uh, material. So let's go and do that. The length is still from zero to L, but then now we're gonna start, we're gonna start at minus B over two and we're going to move in with the second box all the way into, uh, we're going to do B over 2 minus half of the width. Let's see what this looks like. So we're going to have two boxes now. Okay, perfect. We, we can see the second box. That are in, and if we enable the geometry visibility volumes, we can see it's actually two volumes. Now we want to do something similar for the vertical direction. So the vertical direction starts from minus H over 2. Uh, plus the width and we're gonna go all the way up to or, or we are gonna go up H minus two times the width because we need to consider both both flanges so if we do that we can see uh, we can see what's going on there and then what we can do now is we can apply to this a boolean operation so I'm gonna do a boolean difference so I'm gonna subtract the two solid objects I'm going to select as uh, the main object this one, press E to select that one, and then we select the tool. The tool is the other volume that you want to subtract. So now if I press E again, you can see that we've taken a chunk out of this, right? And if I mesh, it's going to mesh exactly like, like we want. Okay, so uh, let's see the update of this file so we can see what's going on. Uh, so we're going to add another box on the other side and do the subtraction. Not to do that, I'm just going to add it up here. I add it up here and then I need to do the opposite side. So we're going to start at B uh, over 2 and we're going to go minus B over 2 
plus t over 2. And the height, I think it's going to be the same thing. Let's just quick check. That looks about right. And then we can just add that volume here as, a, as an additional volume. And we get the full beam. And now we can mesh that with, uh, with tetrahedrons by default. Now we need to add the physical groups. We're going to do it just as before, a surface. And we're going to maybe grab this one and the other side. And we're going to call that fixed. So it's going to be fixed at both ends. And we're also going to add the solid volume physical group. Solid. That is so solid. Excellent. So now we mesh as before. Uh, this is what we have. And then we can save this mesh uh, using the new name. So it's going to be saved in example 2msh now I'm going to go into my Python script and just uh, call it example example 2.py and let's just run it to see what happens. I've, I've done no changes except I need to load example 2.msh in this case. So let's go here and let's say Python example 2.py. Mm, what's going on? There's no no tag with uh, tag. 249. So we're missing a little node. Let's uh, go back here. Yeah, the mesh is too is too coarse. So we we but let's uh, let's go ahead and the make the load node be load uh, node number 209. So I'm going to change the node number here that we're loading to 209. This one, 209. And now we should be able to run. Yeah, and that's how we go. We're applying the the. We're applying the load in the x direction still, so let's change that. Let's do it vertical. So let's put that into zero and minus 10,000. The the size really doesn't matter. There we go. That looks so nice. And uh, let's uh, okay. So another thing you can do is uh, once you uh, once you have here the your displacement field, you want to look at it in the, using the displacement form and then. You, you want to add a, a little displacement factor as such. You can program those things in Gmesh, okay? So the way to do it is as follows. Here, uh, the visualized displacement in Gmesh, it returns this view number. This is a new addition from last, this was not in last script, but it's, it is now, you just get the view number. And what you can do with that is uh, you can access the options. So right before I execute run for, on Gmesh, I can set some view options. So view, and you can say option, and you can say set number, the set number function, and we're going to set, uh, give it the view number. The view number is going to be this one. You can have several views at the same time. So you, you have to set the one for the view that you want. And we're going to call, say, vector type. Five. This is uh, it's it's in the doc in Gmesh's documentation. But if you do this, it'll set the the vector visualization to be that of a displacement field as opposed to a vector field. And the the next thing we need to add is a displace is a factor. So set the option so that the, this gets amplified by an amount. So let's go here. And uh, the way to do that is just add displacement factor. And let's put something like 10 to the power of 3. Let's see how that looks like. We need a little bit more. We have displacements of 10 to minus 6. So if I go to minus uh, 10 to the power of 5 as a displacement factor, that should be about enough. Yeah, that looks good. Um, excellent. Excellent. So this is what we want. Now, I said we're going to do self-weight. The way to do self-weight is as follows. So. What we need to do is apply self-weight for all the elements that uh, that we defined. So it's it's assigned as on a per element basis. So we're not going to assign a point load. We're going to comment this out. And what we're going to do is the easiest thing is to add the body forces uh, over here. So the way I can do this is I can use the density they have I've defined over there and say we're going to apply zero body force in the x direction, zero body force in the y direction, and in z, we're going to go for rho times g. And that's going to be our self-weight. And we need to define what g is. g is uh, 9.81 in normal units, meters over second to the power of 2, like that. And when I execute this, 
I'm gonna get a nice displaced. Oh, did I apply it in the x direction for some reason? It's applying in the x direction. What was the mistake? Zero. Ah, because the the okay, I see. I aligned. Did I align this uh, with the z axis? No. It's applying it in the z axis. What am I missing? Or no tetrahedron minus rho over g, uh, solid material tag. Uh, this should be going on not in the y direction. What if I do that? Body force. Ah, no, I see what I did. I, I, I missed a comma. So I am indeed applying it in the y direction. So let's go back, fix that, and yeah, that should be a y displaced shape, a, a z displaced shape. Yeah, so that's how you get a beam. Uh, model uh, with self weight with both fixed ends and uh, in this case when you use this option when you use the body forces like this uh, you're applying a constant body force so this is not going to change with the load factor if you wanted to change with the load factor what you can do is uh, the following so you can you can leave this uh, like this so I'm going to apply minus rho times g and then you can use the OPS dot time series for that, but let's first call the element tags. Let's do it as follows. So, element tags. I'm going to save those as tet element tags. The reason I'm doing that is because uh, I'm calling get elements and nodes with the output of element tags again, so it's going to get overridden. So I'm saving them. And uh, here, instead of adding a load, a point load, I can do as follows. So I can do an l element load like this and let's uh, what are the elements we're going to apply we're going to apply that to the tetrahedron element tags and we're going to use a load type there's several element load types the one we want in this case is self weight like this and then we can have some factors that uh, that multiply these uh, body forces in each direction in this case we just want zero zero and let's say one. It's going to be the same uh, as before. So the results in this case are the same. But uh, if I want to amplify them by 10, so maybe I want to do some sort of uh, incremental analysis, I, I can set that factor to be 10. And uh, I'm going to get 10 times the displacement in this case because it's a linear problem. But now what I've, what I've gained is that I have L loads, and these are inside a load pattern. And, and a load pattern has a time series. So I can now modulate the self weight with a time series. And that is useful for incremental and nonlinear analysis and everything. I'm gonna stop this video at this point. You can click like and subscribe and just let me know if there's anything else that you wanna see done. Uh, I have some more ideas for the future to keep doing videos like this, but uh, this is all for now so that we can keep this uh, video nice and short. Uh, see you next time.